Hey everyone, my name is Vivian Nguyen. I am a candidate of pharmacy class of 2021, and I will be going over the medication called canagliflozin, commonly known as Invokana. First, I'll be going over some patient counseling points. Invokana is used along with diet and exercise to lower blood sugars in adults with type 2 diabetes. Take Invokana by mouth in the morning before the first meal. This medication is only taken once a day. The most common side effects include weight loss, increased urination, increased thirst, and genital yeast infection. Now, I'll be going over some serious side effects of Invokana. Contact your doctor right away if you develop these serious side effects. Sudden injury to the kidneys can occur with increased urination and dehydration, which can result in dizziness, lightheadedness, weakness, fainting, and thirst. Genital yeast infection, which can be seen with odor, discharge, itchiness, or pain in the genital areas. Ketoacidosis, which causes vomiting, tiredness, trouble breathing, or stomach pain, infection of the urinary tract, which results in burning or pain when urinating, a need to urinate frequently, and blood in the urine, increased risk of leg and foot amputation in patients with new pain or tenderness, sores or ulcer, or infection in your legs or feet. Now we'll be going into detail about Invokana. Here's a formal introduction to Invokana. It belongs to the drug class called Sodium Glucose Co-Transporter 2, SGLT2 inhibitors. They are orally administered anti-diabetic medications. The pro of Invokana are that they decrease A1C by 0.7 to 1%. They have reduced progression of diabetic kidney disease, reduced risk of hospitalization for heart failure, proven safety profile in patients with an EGFR of 30 to 90. They can cause weight loss and patients can lose 1.6 to 2.8 kilograms. The cons of Invokana is that it has unfavorable adverse effects such as increased risk for urinary tract infections and amputation of the legs. It can increase risk for bone fractures and decrease in bone mineral density. Compared to other drugs that have been in the market such as metformin and sulfonylurea, Invokana is much more expensive. Our next important element is the mechanism of action for Invokana. The kidneys are well known for the maintenance of blood pressure, however, they play a substantial role in the homeostasis of blood glucose as well. The primary mechanism in which the kidneys regulate blood glucose are through the release of glucose into the blood via gluconeogenesis and glucoreabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubules PCT. Glucose reabsorption is accomplished with the active transport of glucose by sodium coupled glucose co-transporter SGLT1 and SGLT2 found in the kidneys. SGLT1 is located in the heart, intestine, trachea, and kidneys, whereas SGLT2 is located only in the kidneys. SGLT1 is shown to reabsorb 10% of filtered glucose reabsorption in the S3 segment of the PCT, whereas SGLT2 have been identified to conduct 90% of reabsorption in the S1 segment of the PCT. The mechanism in which SGLT2 inhibitors work is through inhibition of these SGLT2 co-transporters, ultimately resulting in decreasing renal reabsorption of the filtered glucose. This inhibition of glucose reabsorption results in increased renal glucose excretion into the urine, defined as glucosuria. The increased excretion of glucose may have beneficial effects of weight loss. Dosage and formulation of Invokana. Invokana is available as a 100mg and 300mg tablet. The initial recommended dose for Invokana is 100mg by mouth prior to the first meal of the day. As for dose titration, maximum adult daily doses of 300mg may be warranted in patients needing additional glycemic control with normal renal function defined as an EGFR greater than or equal to 60. They also come in a combination product with metformin, known as Invokamet. We just talked about dosing, but let's take a deeper look at dose adjustment. 
For Imokana, no hepatic dose adjustment is necessary. Imokana is associated with increase in serum creatinine and decrease in EGFR. Baseline renal function tests before initiation of therapy, as well as regular renal function monitoring throughout the course of treatment is necessary. In patients with an EGFR of 45 to 59, 100 milligram is the max dose. In patients with an EGFR of 30 to 44, it is not recommended. And in patients with an EGFR less than 30, it is contraindicated for use. Hypovolemic patients should avoid the use of Invokana until euvolemic is restored due to increased risk of symptomatic hypotension. Now focusing on the drug-drug interaction, co-administration of Invokana with UGT enzyme inducers such as rifampin decreases Invokana efficacy by 51%. Clinicians choosing to initiate with UGT inducer should consider increasing the dose to 300 mg once daily under the following conditions. Patients is currently tolerating Invokana 100 mg once daily, has an EGFR greater than 60, and requires additional glycemic control. Conversely, patients taking Invokana 300 mg with digoxin can have an increase in the AUC and mean peak drug concentration, Cmax. Monitor appropriately. Earlier, I did mention the common side effects. Now we're going to focus more on the adverse effects. That includes weight loss, hypoglycemia, increased urination, increased thirst, increased magnesium and phosphate, vaginal yeast infection, yeast infection of the penis, and urinary tract infections. Some warnings and precautions to be aware of with Invokana is that this medication does contain a black box warning. The black box warning is that there is increased risk for legs and foot amputation. Healthcare providers should evaluate risk prior to treatment. This includes history of amputation, PAD, peripheral neuropathy, and or diabetic foot ulcer. Some warnings include ketoacidosis, including fatal cases, urosepsis and phylonephritis, necrotizing fasciated of the perineum, increased LDL, increased risk of bone fracture, hypotension, acute kidney injury, and renal impairment due to intravascular volume depletion. Monitoring parameters to be aware of for efficacy is A1C. Patients should get it at least twice yearly who have stable glycemic control and are meeting treatment goal, quarterly in patients not meeting treatment goal or with any therapy change. Also monitor for blood glucose. As for safety, monitor renal function, signs and symptoms of genital yeast infection, signs and symptoms of ketoacidosis, signs and symptoms of urinary tract infection, blood pressures for hypotension, any new pain or tenderness, sore or ulcers, or infections in the leg or feet because patient can be increased risk for amputations. These are my references. Thank you everyone for listening to my presentation. I hope you have a great rest of your day.